Colt Cade was in his corner earlier. The bell and this 10 minute round world title fight. Coleman event. What a start for Cade Rotolo. Cade Rotolo went after the ankle pick, transitioned into a body lock, and put Mateus Gabriel on his back. And But that's exactly where Mateus wants to be. Immediately starts going after the legs, looking to lock things up. There's that kind of a daily heaver right there. Single X. Yeah, make no mistake. Gabriel, over the last two calendar years, his record is 31 and 2. All he does is win as well. Yeah, very good. Submission attacker. Very active off his back. There's Cade threatening a straight ankle lock. You know Gabriel ain't gonna fall for that. 17 straight wins coming in for Cade Rotolo, the last five by submission. Rotolo's tried to knee slice through the guard, but like Rich was saying on the walk, man, Gabriel has just such an amazing guard. It's so difficult to pass it. And look at that, slides around the back. There's the... He, yeah, Gabriel, he used that De La Hiva to almost set up the back take right there. And this is what I was talking about. Gabriel having that guard that's just a puzzle that's going to be difficult to solve in this 10 minute time limit. Good job by both guys to maintain neutral position. You can see Kate, Gabriel trying to reach up, disrupt the posture of Cade. Cade does a good job of maintaining upright posture. Yeah, he's just the one that he's grabbing the back of the head, disrupting the posture so that he's just spinal manipulation, hoping that Cade will pull back hard, get himself out of position, setting something else up. You know, maybe Mateus is looking for a leg off of that. He'll just flow from one thing to the next. We mentioned it's a family affair. They've already got one $50,000 bonus earlier tonight with Ty's victory. And overall, by my count, I believe they've got $150,000 worth of bonuses a, from one championship, and they're building that gym in Costa Rica. That's a lot of gyms out there. They can build a couple more now pretty soon. But uh, first, they got to get past this guy right here because Gabriel's doing a great job of keeping his legs in front of Cade. That's what Cade wants to do. Cade wants to essentially get past the legs, right? And Gabriel wants to attack, set up different submissions from the bottom position here. And he's doing a great job of just holding on to the legs. And that's the thing about no gi, right? In the gi, you have all the, the basically the uniform to hold on to, right? To create your attacks. But in no gi, you have to grab legs and arms and heads, and it creates a whole different game. You know, one of the elements of this match we didn't talk about was Mateus actually dealing with the cage and whether or not that would disrupt him. And Cade came across, picked him up, slammed him right on the cage, and Mateus has pretty much had contact with his head with the cage the whole time, but we haven't really, he's not like making the effort to get away from it. It doesn't seem to bother him. I mean, we saw the way that Cade used the cage the first time that he fought, where he was actually jumping off the cage against Shinya Aoki to get into, you know, to take, eventually take the back. But uh, Gabriel says that he's trained inside um, the cage before, but he's also worked a lot up against the wall, which is a different feel, you know? The wall is not the same as the cage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's padded and it doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, this thing ends with a submission or the most legitimate attempts at a submission over the course of 10 minutes, which again, 10 minutes doesn't sound straight ankle lock. You see, Cade's trying to, you know, utilize um, the guard that, you know, uh, Gabriel is using against him by every time the leg comes up, he's trying to lock it up and go for a straight ankle lock. That's really tough to position. Yeah, but even, even if he finish. knows he's, he may not get that, like, it could be possibly that he gets, lock, gets it locked in deep enough that the referee here would call a, uh, a catch. Yeah. If he can hold him down, but Gabriel's got so, act, there's so much activity going on in his guard. Like, he's always moving his legs, and he's staying very active. Back to the feet they go. Rotolo, the champ. Gabriel. There's that ankle pick that Cade likes to do. It sets up the body lock or the double leg. Looks like he could have got poked in the eye right there. Gabriel says, you're good to go, and Cade acknowledges. Mutual respects as we near the midpoint of this 10-minute bout. Lightweight submission grappling world title on the line. First defense of it for Cade Rotolo, the 19-year-old. Born in Hawaii, grew up in Huntington Beach, California, now lives and trains out of San Diego as well. Has a lot of time in Costa Rica. 
You can see from the last two guard drops that, Mate guard drops that Mateus had that it's not much different than the slam that started the match. Well, you can't pull guard now anymore in one championship grappling rule, so that's really important that you can't just sit down and try to attack. You have to aggressively pull your opponent onto you if you want to pull guard. Mitch, I wanted to mention, 10 minutes doesn't seem like a lot, but how tired are these guys now at the exact midpoint right now? Well, these are world-class grapplers, bro. So they've been no doing this their entire life, so I doubt that they're going to go too tired, but that's another... It looks like Akash is going for a heel hook right here. Mateusz could be in trouble going for the heel hook. He's Cameron Ritolo, the champ. And the referee's called a catch on this, I do believe, so now he's scored. Now he's trying to work his way into a knee bar, but Gabriel... Got the score, but couldn't get the finish just yet with four and a half minutes remaining. Now, his knee wasn't necessarily quite in this, the right position, so I don't know if he could have been finished, but it could have been the heel hook that could have been caught as the submission attempt, so... Cade doesn't seem too concerned here with his left leg. Cade is basically giving, he's, he's, he's hipping in and giving him his leg, saying, go ahead, take something, give me something to work with here. Like, mm. he, you could tell he's getting impatient. He, you know, what set up that the, the heel hook or the ankle lock that he had before was he, he flipped over Mateus' guard in an attempt to do something. And so Cade is just like, come on, give me something. Give me something, and, I, and I'll take that and go with it. It's really interesting to watch the way Cade uses his legs. Like, he uses his legs to peel off the legs of Gabrielle, which is, you know, it's like he's got four arms down there. Like, he's so good at moving his arms. I, I love the way that Cade, and you'll see him do this constantly, stepping on uh, the leg of whoever is in guard for control so that they can't move their hips. I want to mention Mitch again. 58 pro fights for Mateus Gabriel. He's been submitted just one time. Yeah, and that's at black belt, right? That's not counting the hundreds of other times that he competed as a brown belt, purple belt, blue belt. You know, so this is just his black belt record, and that's a lot of matches in a very short period of time. But Cade's, you know, finding a way to make a really big name for himself here. 3-10 to go in the bout. First defense of the world title for Cade Rotolo. See, Mateus was going to take the back there. Cade got a little out of position, but Cade made the quick adjustment right there. And Mateus is not letting go of that arm. Looks like he was trying to go for Omoplata, but great defense from Cade, not to really let it set in. Little blood coming from uh, below the right eye of Cade. 240 left. You know, 10 minutes is a long time to grapple, Brent. Make no mistake about it, but compared to a lot of grappling matches, this is this would be more of a sprint. Mm. And that's why I, I love these matches because of the pace of the match. They both said it would be exciting, and it has lived up to that and then some. I like the way Gabriel goes inverted like that. You know, you think you're past him, you think you're going to a north-south position, but his legs are just... I just have incredible dexterity to maintain and to control positions. Well, you saw there that Cade grabbed his legs, completely flipped him over, and he's able to just swivel back around and maintain guard. And that's just the fluidity of his movement. Two minutes to go. But 10 minutes is not that long to work, Rich. You spoke about it. You know, usually these matches are sometimes when they're really high-level grapplers, they don't have a time limit. You just let them go until there's a submission. Tell you what, Mitch, I'm going to put you on the mat with Cade for 10 minutes, and you tell me that it's not that long, all right? Dude, we I'm gonna ask you. I'm going to ask you at the end of that. I'm Dude, mixed. he got me done in, like, it was, it was ridiculous, actually. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Like he hit me with three submissions in like a minute and a half. So yeah. I don't want I don't want no, no comparison between me and Gabrielle, all right? <laughs> and you quickly realize what how long 90 seconds was with a there guy like go. that. 75 seconds remaining in this world title bout. Lightweight submission grappling belt on the line. So at this point, I think we're one catch up for Cade, which would give him essentially an advantage in the scoring. I would imagine that even if that wasn't scored as a catch, that Cade has been the aggressor here because even though Mateus is trying to drop guard and, and aggress that way, but he's the one that's walking backwards more. You see that Cade is the one that's controlling the entire circle. Cade slammed him into the fence that time less than a minute to go. 43 seconds. It's not for lack of trying because Cade is trying some takedowns here. Like he's trying to jump scissors and he's trying to definitely work the attack. Oh, there goes there is. Leg again. Had that heel momentarily. 30 seconds remaining. Again going after the leg looking for a heel hook but 
Gabriel is able to defend, turning the tables, putting Kate on the bottom now. Did the ref call a catch on that second heel there? It looked like he did. His hand's going up, but I don't know if he's calling it as a catch or if he's just saying that there's an attempt there. Yeah, well, then that's the same thing that happened on the first one, so I don't know if it was a legitimate catch either. Oh, we have a nice, nice uh, arm and guillotine here. As this world title fight comes to an end here in Manila, good show put on by Kane Rotillo, the American, and Mateus Gabriel from Brazil. Entertaining match between two very good grapplers. You can just see how well they were matched up. Just because, I mean, there was very little attempts, there was very little catches, just because these guys were so active. We knew it was a stylistic matchup. The top game of Cade Rutolo against the bottom game of Gabriel. Very entertaining fight. Look at some of this action. Watch, heel, ankle pick, right into a body lock, takedown, picks him up, slams on the mat, and immediately he started going after it at a very frantic pace. Look at the strength of Mateus there when Kate picks him up, he just holds his guard and says, all right, I'll sit up with you here. But this is what I was talking about, about that flip there, that Kate uses that flip and the scramble and catches this heel hook here. Now, it looks like the referee is calling catch there uh, as well as at the end, but Mateus has got this situation completely under control. This is not something that any normal grappler would have completely under control, but he's able to just slowly, slowly inch his knee out of the fulcrum of the pressure there. Both fighters in the center of the one circle ready to find out if Caden Rotillo defended that championship or somehow Mateus can get the result. Here is Dom Lau. This match was presented to you by Toomey. And now to present the belt for this match, we have the chairman and CEO of one championship, Mr. Chachri Sityotong. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 minutes of battle, we turn now to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have scored this contest in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and still undisputed one.